IKEA's famous founder Ingvar Kampert heirs will only inherit a fraction of his £54 billion pound fortune. The 91-year-old, who died last month, was one of the richest people in the world thanks to the success of his flat pack empire. The frugal businessman was ranked eighth on Bloomberg's Billionaires Index with a fortune of around £54 billion. Bloomberg analysts report that most of the billionaire's fortune will not go to his children as the majority of IKEA stores are owned by the Stichting Inca Foundation, a Dutch organization. The Dutch entity's main purpose is to donate funds to charity and to support innovation in design. The foundation was established by Kampert in the 1980s and is not under his family's control. It is in fact controlled by Liechtenstein-based InterOgo Foundation, and its subsidiary, InterIKEA is the global IKEA franchiser. Bloomberg reports that the foundation essentially owns itself, and the Campert family are not allowed to own any shares. The unique and complicated structure of the company was devised to ensure IKEA's long-term survival. The structure also makes it impossible for any individual, even of direct heir, to take control if the company upon Campert's death. While Campert's family members will not have any control over the IKEA company, they will still receive modest payouts from the Econo Group which is worth billions in its own right. Econo Group is owned by the family, and a number of financial real estate, manufacturing and retail businesses operate under it. Ingvar Kampert started the Swedish furniture company in 1943, when he was just 17, and sold replicas of his uncle Ernst's kitchen table. Campert got the idea of flat pack furniture when he was struggling to fit a table in a car and his pal suggested he take the legs off. The company has since become one of the biggest in the world with more than 300 stores in 28 countries. Campert resigned from the board in 2013 when he was aged 87 and died peacefully at his small and home last month, aged 91. Despite his incredible fortune, the enigmatic entrepreneur was described as stingy and disagreeable, and heavily criticized for tax avoidance and his links to the Nazis. The frugal Swede flew economy, stayed in cheap hotels, drove a Volvo he had owned for 20 years, and wore clothes bought from flea markets. He had little regard for what people thought of him and was unapologetic, even proud, of his penny-pinching ways. While his tightness with money made him notorious around the world, it was his links to the Nazis that dealt a more serious blow to his reputation. Ingvar's German grandmother was a great admirer of Hitler, and, in 1994, it emerged that Ingvar had a close friendship with pro-Nazi politician Per Engdahl in his late teens and early twenties. The leader of the quasi-fascist neo-Swedish movement was even aghast at Ingvar's wedding to first wife Kirsten Wedeling in 1950. Ingvar later described that time as the greatest mistake of my life and even wrote a letter to his employees asking for their forgiveness. Do you have a story for The Sun online news team? Email us at tips at thesun.co.uk or call 02077 8243